Welcome to Dynan and another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about the relationship of horsepower and torque. So I made the hypothetical perfect engine. And this is an engine that has the same amount of torque at every RPM, 450 pound-feet. And basically what horsepower is, is a mathematical calculation off of torque, basically multiplying torque times RPM and dividing it by 5252. The reason we do this basically is every time there's a cylinder pulse as the engine revs, we get a power pulse, and that power pulse produces torque. But as the power pulses get closer together, we get more of them, we can accomplish more work, and the work is accelerating the car. So we multiply the torque times RPM to show how much work that we can accomplish. This is why your car seems to gain power as you accelerate, because even though the torque may remain constant or even oftentimes go down, the horsepower will still climb because of this mathematical relationship. So now that we've explained horsepower and torque in the relationship, let's show you some actual numbers on a real engine. This is the 550, 650, and 750 engine made from 2011 through 2013. That's a 4.4 .4 liter V8. And it comes from BMW with 450 pound-feet of torque. Makes a little bit more than that. Actually, BMW is pretty conservative. And 400 horsepower. And it makes a little bit more than that as well. The dotted line represents the stock engine. And then the solid line represents what happens when you put software in your car. This happens to be stage five software, which also is designed for our colder intake, our exhaust system, and our intercooler. But basically what we're doing is we're holding the torque up for a longer period of time, and even all the way up to red line. And what this does is since we're multiplying torque times horsepower, when the torque is higher, the horsepower is higher too because they're mathematically linked. What we really like to do is we like to have the torque stay flat all the way across like the perfect graph I showed you before, but the problem is we'd overspend the turbocharger because the turbocharger won't produce that volume of air and the turbo would wear out prematurely and fail. The reason they put such a small turbo on is a small turbo gives you a very, very good torque down low, a very good response, makes boost really quickly and eliminates lag. And most people don't rev their cars out to high RPM all the time anyway, so the torque down low is a lot more practical for daily use. We certainly would like to see a little bit more of a compromise to the top end with a little bit less down here, but this is the way the car comes because that's what the manufacturer decided is important. Now we're going to go to a graph that shows the Stage 5 software that it showed you with the stock turbochargers with our Stage 6 software, which is designed for larger turbochargers. And as you can see, the torque at lower RPM and the horsepower is virtually identical of the two because the goal here is not really to increase the bottom end anymore because we're making lots of torque, 580 pound-feet of torque. What we're trying to do is have the engine not run out and go flat at high RPM. And the reason it does that is the compressor in the turbocharger is too small, just can't pump enough air. If we were to try and raise the boost, which sometimes people do in the aftermarket, we overspin the turbocharger. It really just makes a lot of heat. It doesn't really make any more power. And it wears out the turbocharger prematurely because we're overspinning the turbocharger. So the solution is to put a bigger compressor on. So without going to higher RPM on the turbo, the turbo will still produce more airflow. And that's what we've done here. We put a bigger compressor wheel on. And you can see right about middle of the power band, it separates out. And it pumps a much higher level of air at higher RPM. And that makes the horsepower go up a corresponding amount. Makes the power band a lot wider. Uh, it does give you a little bit more lag, the larger turbocharger, but the increase in lag is pretty minimal. And the increase in power is fairly dramatic, uh, around the ranges of 30 to 40 horsepower in the upper half of the RPM band. Basically, you can raise the boost and get a pretty low cost improvement in power out of your car with software. But if you really want to get that top end power that really makes the car uh, incredibly fast, uh, exciting to drive. You have to go a larger turbocharger and a larger intercooler and a higher flow intake and exhaust to complement them all. When you do that, you get a 50% more gain than just software by itself when you add all the hardware.